Hello, this is Vale and welcome to my channel. First things first, I'm very happy that you are interactively watching my videos. I'm getting a lot of questions on Reddit and Twitter on my previous videos on new topics or on something that people have failed to understand in some levels. So they are directly asking me questions that what do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? What does RBP mean? What is blind SQL injection where I use these things? So I'm actually very happy that I think I'm making some change out there. So anyways, I really like for you to keep watching the videos and let me make some change and on the process I can learn something as well. So let's skip on to today's tutorial which is going to be a two part series which means there are going to be two videos back to back that will be uploaded on my YouTube. Now one is this video which is I'm going to do today. This video will be specifically going to focus on buffer overflow or how we can actually misuse the stack to overwrite certain parts of memory. Alright, so on the second video, I am going to use the same exploitation or the same problem within memory management in C to demonstrate a real actual buffer overflow with shell codes in it, which can in future, you know, lead to uh, get executed with some bad stuff. So for example, if you have a backdoor and I hope that you know what a backdoor is. So let's say I have made a small app which is based on sockets. So what it does is when you double click that piece of software, what it does is it actually connects back to my PC and that's how I can get a direct shell connected with your computer which means I can do anything from my keyboard but the problem is that the commands will be executed on your computer. Now the only difference between the softwares like AnyDesk or TeamViewer versus a backdoor is that when we are actually using TeamViewer or AnyDesk or softwares like this, you are giving me a specific permission with a username and password saying that yes you can control these parts of my program or these parts of my PC so maybe you can say you can only watch the screen but you cannot do anything so you can exclusively set permissions for me to work on your computer but in case of a backdoor you will not be even able to understand or able to identify that your computer is connected to mine and within that scope if I am able to you know escalate my privileges I can possibly do everything on your computer so that is basically a simple definition of a backdoor now what if I can exploit a program by letting it execute a part of a backdoor which was not intended for the program to do so let's say we have a simple calculator program we do not have any backdoor access or we do not have any backdoor implemented on the code of the calculator software but let's say we discover that a calculator program is uh, exploitable with buffer overflow so what we can do is we can actually manipulate the calculator software in such a way that it actually executes the backdoor code on your computer but it was never intended for the calculator to do so so as soon as that happens I get a direct connection to your computer or the reverse can happen as well so your computer opens up a port and then I connect to your computer with the backdoor installed on your computer so that's what I'm talking about so a backdoor can be used very maliciously in the real world so buffer overflow is kind of an entry point for the backdoor to be installed on your computer in the first place so on the second video I will be demonstrating exactly how a shell code or how a backdoor is injected into a innocent program that was not intended to do by the program itself so maybe it can be a simple calculator program it can be a simple notepad program or it can be as simple as anything but if it has a buffer overflow vulnerability then the programmer or the hacker can absolutely do anything with a piece of that innocent code now I am going to be dividing up this video into two steps because buffer overflow or attacking buffer overflow is basically lying on the same topic but is actually different in some situations where in buffer overflow attack we have to make a shell code we have to know the reason behind the shell codes existence so we have to first program uh, a backdoor maybe or program some executable shell or maybe program something other than what is intended for the computer or what is intended for the program to do then we have to convert it to shell code then we have to inject the whole shell code and the process is a bit complex so in this video what I'm going to do is manually show you 
that just accept of attacking someone's computer or injecting the program with shell codes or make it do things that is completely unexpected of the program by manufacturing instructions of my own so I can inject the program with and I'm not going to show that today what I'm going to show is that how you can get up to the point then you can actually do that so I'm going to be teaching you in this particular video that how to actually overwrite memory addresses in stack how can I change the execution flow of a program and on the second video I will completely base the tutorial on this topic except only one difference that in this video I am going to be executing a function that was unintended or uncalled for but I am going to be executing the program in such a way that the program control or the program execution flow changes by itself but in the second video the only thing that is going to be changed here is that what we do after we have changed the execution flow of the program so both things are complex by itself so I'm going to be dividing the video into two parts so let's go ahead and learn about how we can actually overwrite memory or replace memory and such that the program changes its execution control flow to do something it was not intended to on the first place so I'm just going to cut off myself from the screen and just focus on the computer screen okay so I'm going to go ahead in my Kali Linux and show you the program that I wrote in C so this is the program let me just avoid this part right now because this is going to be coming in handy very soon you can see that this is the main program that I'm worried about and you can see that I have implemented a main function where I have taken two variables namely variable 1 and variable 2 both are type character and I have specifically taken space for only 8 limited characters so we already know that each character represents one byte so 8 character space basically means we are taking specifically 8 bytes for both of the variables alright now you can see that I have initiated variable 1 with the string hello and I have just declared variable 2 right now and I'm, I have done nothing with it on the third line I am implementing a scanf so the user can give a value but you can see on the next lines that I have done nothing with variable 2 ever so which means that when the user gives some value on this third line that value is going to be stored on variable 2 but is never displayed or never stored or never done nothing so on the fourth line what I have done is I'm just printing out the value for variable 1 which is we know that is hello and then I have exited the program so you can see two things here that variable 2 was never called or never displayed or never done anything with we have just taken the value from the user and kept it on the memory and that's it and this function is another important uh, aspect of this tutorial you can see that in the main program this function called bypass has never been called which means if there are a thousand functions right here and those thousand functions were never called from the main program those thousand functions would be completely valueless so in this case you can see that this function is completely valueless because this is never called for so I want to show two things in this video right here today is that one how can we actually overwrite memory addresses or memory values and secondly how we can use that same vulnerability in our program to somehow call this bypass function and that's it and you can see that the only job of the bypass function is to print program execution changed so it is literally the same meaning which means if I am able to call this bypass function the program execution is changed we can manually change the flow of the program execution which means this bypass function was never called for or never intended for my program to do so but still the bypass function gets called so that's how we can actually manipulate a program to do things that it was never intended to and we are going to do that by using a same vulnerability I am going to do in in case of variable one that is buffer overflow or overwriting memory values with something that was not intended to do by the program so let me just compile this okay not maybe compile because I have compiled it right here if I execute it you can pretty much see what I'm talking about so NF nice so you can see that now the program is prompting for me to give a value so let me just give maybe just a value and you can see that I'm getting the string or getting the output for variable one or this is exactly the value of 
okay sorry this is exactly the value from variable one so you can remember that whatever I get prompted by from the fun uh, from the program MF is basically under the scanf function and the job of the scanf function in this program is to take whatever the user has supplied as a string and keep it on the variable 2 so if you remember from the code that variable 2 was never done anything with so I have never stored or saved or displayed the value from variable 2 but variable 1 we initiated it with hello that is we hard coded the value for variable 1 and that value is being displayed right here so whatever I should give for variable 2 we should get the value for variable 1 which is permanently in a hard coded way set at hello right so let me try this again maybe say again why not so if I just give the value again I'm still going to get the value of variable 1 which is hello so let me try and do something illegal so which means I'm going to do something that is not intended by the program for itself to do so let's say I run the program and if you remember that both the variables variable 1 and variable 2 has been explicitly given the space for 8 characters or in this case 8 bytes so what if I give something as a value which is greater than 8 values or 8 characters so let me just try with a value maybe why not edifier speakers so if I just hit enter you can see that a variable one is not hello anymore it has been updated to some characters that is that spells speakers so why did this actually happen this should have been hello right but you can see that it has been replaced with speakers which means that somehow this part of the string overflowed into the memory space where hello should be written so let's check how it is actually done okay now before I move on to the reasoning part of this uh, tutorial let me just say that I am going to go to my GDB disassembler of course but I'm not going to explain everything line by line because whatever I should have explained in this video has already been explained in my previous video which is on reverse engineering so I'm just going to say this once that if you are very new to assembly you can just go ahead on my previous video and then come back to this video so you can understand pretty much well that what I am doing but if you are absolutely new to assembly then I suggest you go to Google study some assembly then come to my first video on this series that is solely developed on stacks so after that you come to reverse engineering video of mine and after that you come to this video so you can parallelly understand what I am talking about and the way of how I teach so let me go to the reasoning part of why hello became pickers okay so now I really hope that you remember everything from the stack frame video of mine or have a fairly good understanding about how stack works because the stack frame is the only thing that is important in this video and the stack is the only thing that we need to examine to understand why hello became speak uh, why hello became peakers when we supplied a value that is more than eight characters long so I'm just going to go over to my windows and I have prepared you a slide so I'm going to show you that so now this is the starting of the stack frame and we are going to use this stack frame for this program so I have uh, written up some memory addresses they are all you can see that they are all in a difference of 8 bytes so I have written these abstract addresses for the ease of understanding and nothing else so let's say that the stack pointer is pointing to a random free space at the stack which is also called the top of the stack so let's say that the stack pointer is pointing right here right in this address and the base pointer is at 5 so maybe the 5 is the base pointer for the current program that is being executed right now before this stack frame is even created so what happens at the first stage is or you already probably know that the old instruction pointer is first being pushed on to the stack so you can see that the old instruction pointer or old IP is first pushed on to the stack and the stack pointer is been updated to 132 so you can see the 132 is the memory address where the old instruction pointer is now saved and the base pointer is still pointing at 5 so now what we will do is we will also push the previous or old base pointers value onto the stack specifically in this part of the stack so on the second instruction the old base pointer value which is 5 is being pushed to the memory address 116 
and the stack pointer is updated to 116. So on the next instruction, what happens is the base pointer is given the value of the stack pointer. So both are at 116 right now. So you can see that the base pointer just became 116 from 5 and we do not need to worry about the 5 because the 5 has been saved onto the stack and this is not going to be changed intentionally of course. So now both the base pointer and stack pointer is pointing to the same memory address which is 116. So on the next instruction what happens is we are decrementing maybe 16 bytes from stack pointer and 116 minus 16 is 100. So the stack pointer became 100 and you can see that the stack pointer is currently pointing to this memory address and this and the difference between the base pointer and the stack pointer is basically the stack frame every local variables and every function calls and everything that is we need to store uh, on the stack will be stored right here so now if you remember from my video about stack frames is that the stack works in a last in first out architecture and everything in the stack everything that happens on a stack frame is referenced via the base pointer because the base pointer is not moving at all so the whole program will be executed by keeping in mind that the base pointer is at now currently pointing to 116 and everything will be referenced uh, with the address 116. So what happens is the first variable that we take it is 8 characters long which means 8 bytes. So first what will happen is the base pointer will be used as a reference to keep or to store the variable in the stack. So let's say 8 is the number of bytes we are taking for variable 1 which means that the value will be stored in a memory location within the stack that is base pointer minus 8. So what is base pointer minus 8? So 116 minus 8 is 108. So you can see that 108 is the memory address that variable 1 will be stored in. So on this, for the second variable we will just use maybe uh, base pointer minus 16 which is again 100. So the second variable will be stored right here. So if we just check that is exactly what's happening. So the variable 1 which was initiated by the hard-coded string hello and I just say that it is referenced by base pointer minus 8 which is the 108 address and for the second variable also which will be given the value via scanf which scanf pulls off from a user prompt where the user types in the string so that variable 2 is referenced by base pointer minus 16 so when we are accessing the variables we will also use the base pointer minus 8 or base pointer minus 16 notations so we can actually access the variables uh, in the memory address 100 and in the memory address 108 and all of these addresses are referenced via the base pointer which is 116 so if I just say that show me everything that is on base pointer minus 8 it will show us variable 1 if I tell the compiler that show me everything that is in base pointer minus 16 it will show us the starting address of the variable 2 so that's how it works now the question is what happens when I maybe supply this string say I have supplied hello this is V so you can see that hello this is V is more than 8 characters so if I count H E L L O space this so 5 plus 1 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 we have 15 characters so what happens is first hello and space then th is actually stored on variable 2 you can see that the scanf was meant for variable 2 so what happens is hello this is v is pulled off from scanf and is actually stored on variable 2 but the compiler doesn't exactly know and it doesn't actually check that if the given value is also lower than or is equal to or is more than the space allocated by the programmer. So we already know that variable 2 was assigned 8 bytes worth of memory but it actually doesn't ever check that if the given value is more or less than 8. So what happens is it does take the whole string and keep it on the memory but what happens is as soon as it completes the 8th character the excess characters which is more than 8 is overflown to the next immediate memory so what is the next immediate memory so you can see that I have just wrote 100 but if I have manually divided it all up so it would be like 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107 so then it starts with 108, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 then it comes 116 which is also the current base pointers value so what happens is H E L L O space T H 
consumes all the uh, memory addresses from 100 to 107 but the next excess characters is stored consecutively on the next available memory address which after 107 comes 108 which is in this case the exact location for variable 1 so variable 1 was supposed to print hello so variable 1 is holding the address for the memory location where the string hello is stored right now but as soon as I supplied some characters which is more than 8 it is immediately replaced with is space is space v so that is the reason why in our actual program where we have supplied edifier speakers edifier and s was stored in the space that was manually allocated for variable 2 but the characters which spell peakers actually overflowed onto the next immediate memory segment which starts at 108 which is also the starting memory address for variable 1 so that's how hello gets replaced with is is v or in our case it was peakers so again edifier s so edifiers the exact set of characters spell edifiers so edifiers was kept on variable 2 as it was intended to but what it was not intended to by the programmer was that peakers actually was not kept in this memory address because edifiers speakers is more than 8 bytes so the first 8 bytes is filled with edifiers but the remaining bytes or the remaining or the excess bytes that was supplied to by the user actually overflowed to the next immediate available memory space in this case which is the memory space allocated for variable 1 so that's how hello becomes peakers in our example or in this example hello becomes is space is space v so now there is another most important part that is coming up so if i actually show you this in gdb you will be very interested to see what exactly happens okay so i'm just going to show you in gdb whatever i spoke about until now so let's see desktop let me just move over to desktop and say gdb f memf right so let me just check if it runs nice so let me just set the flavor set this assembly flavor in shell and now i'm not going to exactly disassemble main i'm just going to run but just let me give in a breakpoint show so i can show you how exactly the stack looks like so break at main and run i'm just going to go ahead to the exact instruction where it induces scanf so i'm right here so if i just say right and press enter i'm just going to show you exactly how the compiler works so if i for example if you remember that we re we reference everything with the base pointer value so i have already said to you that the base pointer is at 116 so if i just wanted to say that show me everything that is on base pointer minus 8 it should give us the variable one's value right so if i just go over to my vm and say that show me everything that is on base pointer or in this case rbp minus 8 what we should get is the string hello let me see nice we are getting the hello because that is the exact location where variable 1 is being stored on right now so if i just do minus 16 we get the value right so you can see that rbp minus 16 is the place for variable 2 rbp minus 8 is the location for variable 1 so just let me show you what exactly happens when we do something illegal such as uh, supplying strings that exceeds 8 characters or 8 bytes so if I just go and run this again start from the beginning and maybe go and supply the exact same string with a, which is edifier speakers and try to display the same value which is at rbp minus 8 or base pointer minus 8 what we should have gotten is hello but what we will get is the value peakers because whatever was in rbp minus 16 overflowed to rbp minus 8 because what is rbp minus 16 what is rbp minus 8 the assembly or the cpu doesn't know the difference between the two of them so the job to know the difference between two of them is depending on the coder 
not the CPU. So for the CPU, the stack is a bunch of memory addresses lying side by side, okay? So when we say base pointer minus eight, the compiler specifically stores the location from our instruction base pointer minus eight. So whatever we type in gets stored on base pointer minus eight. For the second variable, it specifically stores a location that is base pointer minus 16. But the difference between those two things are not understood by the CPU. So if I can somehow exceed the limit of base pointer minus 16, it should go over to base pointer minus 8. I hope you can really understand what I'm trying to say is that the CPU or the memory controller doesn't exactly know the difference between two of those memory locations. To CPU, both base pointer minus 16 and base pointer minus 8 or base pointer minus 14, why not? All of these are just simple memory addresses. So whatever it is that exceeds the given location for one memory address immediately overflows to the next immediate available memory space. So that's how when we exceeded the character limit for 8 bytes for variable 2, it immediately moved on to the space assigned to for variable 1 because compiler doesn't understand the difference between the two of them. So this is called a typical example of a buffer overflow where RBP minus 8 was a specific location, RBP minus 16 was another specific location assigned to by the programmer for specific jobs and the overflowing of the strings was not intended by the programmer but still data from variable 2's memory location overflowed to the memory location for variable 1. Okay, so this is the same vulnerability that will allow us to change the execution flow of the program which is we are going to call the function bypass which was never intended to call for we are going to call that function using the same exact vulnerability and what I'm going to come up with the next video is going to use the same vulnerability to do something very different and might be malicious for the program and that was never going to be intended as well. So when the hackers use buffer overflow attacks, they use the same exact vulnerability that when memory address that is assigned for one variable or one job gets overflowed by the variable staying just next to it. So Let's move on to the part where I can show you how we can call the bypass function by overflowing some memory addresses in the stack. Okay, so let's move on to a new scenario. If I just show you this picture again, you can see that what I did previously was I have supplied a string which exceeded eight characters. So what happened was that the first eight characters stayed on the location of variable two, which is base pointer minus 16 the next exceeding eight characters or seven or six characters overflowed into the location of variable one which is base pointer minus eight now let's talk about a scenario where we have able to supply a set of characters that is say of length 30 characters so we can see that what will happen is that the first eight characters the first set of eight characters will stay in its place which is uh, base pointer minus 16 or variable twos then it will move on or overflow to the next immediate memory addresses which is for which is allocated for variable one the third set of eight characters will now move on or overflow to this location which is addressed at 116 which you can see is also the address that is currently in the base pointer register so what is in the current base pointer registers address right here we can see that the old base pointer value or the old base pointer address is currently residing on the base pointer location so the third set of characters will be overflown into this memory segment but we are still remaining some characters right so eight threes are 24 the string was 30 characters long so we have still six characters remaining and what will happen now is it will move on to the next immediate consecutive memory address which is at 132 which we can also reference as base pointer plus 8 okay I think I have made a mistake when drawing these diagrams so it should have been 124 I guess right 16 17 8 9 20 21 22 23 24 yep it should have been a 124 but okay just uh, pardon me for my mistake so let's just let's just say that this is 124 so the main thing that we are concerned about is that now the old instruction pointers value is also going to be replaced by the remaining six characters that we supplied in for variable twos a scanf function right so if you remember from the stack frame video of mine what exactly happens at the last two instructions of any functions 
when it's been executed. So at the last two instructions, when we are on the edge of exiting from that current function, what happens is the whole stack space is deleted, which means the stack frame is now not available anymore. These last two memory address of the stack is still important because the old base pointer's value will be popped off from this memory location and will be saved on to the base pointer for the program to go back to what it was executing before this program even started and on the last instruction which is going to be the return instruction the old information pointer which in this case is an address this address will be pushed on so let's say the old information pointer is pointing to maybe maybe say 744 why not so if the old instruction pointer was at 744 this 744 which is specifically an address is now stored right here so on the last instruction of any function that is the return function that return function will immediately pop off this address which is 744 to the current instruction pointer and that instruction pointer will on the next instruction start executing from the memory address 744 so I have drawn up the same thing which I just told right now in here so let's say there is a function on the memory at the memory address 507 in this example it's just named as function but we already know that the function that we are going to actually run is function bypass which I wrote on the C program so let's say that there is the function uh, which starts at the memory address 507 so what if we have supplied this perfect string which is a well crafted exploitable string which is we are supplying the string which is eight ones then eight twos then eight a's and then we are specially giving in the address you can see that 507 is the start address of the function and here as well we have given in 507 so what I'm trying to say is what will happen when we supply the string when the scanf is executed is that the first eight ones will be stored on this location of the memory then the second eight twos will be stored on this location of the memory then these section that is 8 A's will be replaced with old base pointers value so which means that the old base pointers value whatever it was I don't know will be replaced by 8 A's and then on the instruction pointers section which is currently holding the instruction pointer of the previous function that it was executing before any of this even started this address which I abstractly told you was at maybe 744 that 744 will be replaced with 507 so when the program actually gets exited from so when the last two instructions of the stack is actually being executed the old base pointer is containing first of all illegal values because 8 is are not exactly an address so we will get a complete segmentation fault for that but what happens is on the last line when we are returning from the function or when we are exiting from the function this 00000507 address will be placed onto the instruction pointer now the job of the instruction pointer is to immediately execute the address which it just got from the return function or the return instruction of assembly so what will happen it is on the next instruction the instruction pointer which just got this value within itself will start executing whatever it is at 507 so whatever it is at 507 is some function that we have written so whenever the program exits and returns the last information on the stack which should be the old value of the instruction pointer but is replaced with a perfectly coerced memory address so that memory address will be updated instead of the old actual instruction pointers address so when the return instruction is happening this updated new address will be replaced to on the instruction pointer and then and the instruction pointer will immediately start executing whatever it is at the address 507 which is calling a function so you can see on return it will start executing the function 507 so how can we actually supply this string so mathematically precise that we are sure that we can actually execute this function nice so let's go to GDB and actually perform this attack so I think you have understood what I am trying to say here so let's move on to GDB nice so I'm just going to quit GDB for a second so I can show you what exactly I'm talking about so 
if I just say okay CD desktop and GDB memf so there is this beautiful thing called info functions if I do that I can see all the functions that has been called so you can see that all of these functions are proprietary C functions that is not made by a human being so you can see that these two are the main functions that we are mainly concerned about that is main and bypass so let's just run it for one time so let's say it's hello so okay nice so I am now going to first let's set the flavor to Intel so set this as sorry for this I mistake this every time this assembly what okay let me write this again it's pretty disturbing this assembly flavor Intel nice so if I just say um, info functions and I'm pretty much looking for the functions address that is bypass so you can see I have got the address 51 zero 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 five 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 one seven five so what I'm going to do is take note of this in a local text editor I'm going to use mouse pad so sorry for that I'm just going to start mouse pad nice so I'm going to copy this right here so now let's run the program and see what exactly happens so if I just say run okay, let me just set a breakpoint and see if I can actually overwrite the RBP's address and the old RIP's address or the old instruction pointers address. So let me just first run this program, all right? Now, let me just go ahead and execute some instructions. Now, if I can see what is saved as the old instruction pointer, I can see that by just typing in for frame. And you can see that the saved rip or the saved address for the instruction pointer which was being executed before this function even started is 0x7ffff7e1ebobe0b so this is supposed to be the address that is saved at RIP and we also have the RBP that is the saved address which is um, fffffe160 so what I'm trying to say is both of these should get changed when we uh, pass in some strings that is maybe 30 bytes long or 30 characters long so if I just go on go on go on and when I'm at this part I'm just going to say one 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 two 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 three 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 maybe then okay not three 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 uh, a is easier then b b b b b b b b nice so if I go ahead and say info frame you can see that the rip or the old RIP is actually holding not anymore the the 7FF7E1B1BE0B but it is now currently holding 42 42 uh, 42 42 so 8 42s so 42 is the ASCII value of the letter capital B all right so you can see we have 8 uh, 42 is here which means it ha it is supposed to take 8 bytes which means we have actually supplied 8 characters of B or 8 B's so the whole section of 8 B's is now currently on the rip so the A's should be on what is supposed to be at the current RBP's location so if I just say that print okay not like that so I print the giant words in a hexadecimal and it's, it's supposed to be a string so if I just go ahead and say RBP minus 16 you can see the whole string that I have given so 1 1 1 1 so 8 1's 8 2's 8 A's 8 B's so if I just go on to the place which was supposed to be the uh, location of the second variable sorry the first variable it should be on RBP minus 8 so you can see that the 1 1 1 1's are discarded because we are only targeting base pointer minus 8 so the 1111 should stay on the base pointer minus 16th memory address so we can see that we are getting h2s 8as and 8bs so when we are just finding for the values that is currently hold, uh, currently in place of the base pointers memory address we should get the aaaa 
the, the eight A's and eight B's. So we know that this is a 64 bit uh, compilation, of course. So in that case, uh, for RBP to go and move over to RIP, we have uh, specifically eight bytes. So if I just go ahead and say RBP plus eight and plus eight should be the next consecutive memory address. So that should be the RIP as you can see from the previous slide right here. Uh, the old base pointer, the base pointers uh, address should be 8 bytes and then it comes that the old information pointer should be here after the 8 bytes. So 116 then it should be 124. Uh, sorry for the mistake. I have written 132. So I'm just going to minimize this. Nice. So if I just go RBP plus 8, I should get all the B's. Right? Nice. So I now particularly know that what we have to target is that we have to target 8 then comes 8 and then comes 8 so 8 3 are 24 so we know that 24 is the specific number of characters that we need to overwrite to actually start at the exact location that is base pointer plus 8 which was supposed to hold the old instruction pointers memory address right so if I just run this again and test my theory, I can say that if I just say next instruction and when we are at the scanf, so I say 24, right? So let's write 124 times, why not? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So we have typed 24 ones, right? So we should be at the starting position of the old information pointer. So if I just say um, A, 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 okay, maybe 40 ones are easier. So A, 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 A. So if I just go in info frame, we should get all A's. So if I just uh, go X, G, S, R, B, P plus 8, we should get all A's nice so we particularly know that we have to get past 24 exact characters to overflow anything on the previous old instruction pointers exact location on the stack so we have a pretty good idea about where we can actually inject the address of the bypass function for RIP to execute the bypass function when the main program ends so we have pretty much the idea that we need 24 random variables first for it to overflow and then arrive at the location of the old instruction pointer so now i'm going to come in on another terminal here maybe say here so let's go to desktop first now let's go to the mouse pad where i have previously written the value or, or the address of the old uh, of the bypass function right so we have to do something here that is we have to first convert this to little indian and i'm not very much clear about little or big indians right now i don't have the very good grasp of why it's need even needed so i'm just going to skip over why we need little indian or big indian at all but in this case uh, we have to know that all the modern cpus use this particular little indian format all right so to convert this to little Indian, we have to just reverse the set of uh, these hex characters, all right? So, 75 will go first, then 51, then all the 455s. So, if I just type in, and we have a specific format for that, which is x75, okay, not like that, x75, x51, x55, 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 and x55. So we have four fifty-five here, one, two, three, four, then fifty-one, then seventy-five. Now we have this address. This is an address. So we have to actually copy. Uh, we have to transform this to ASCII because the values we were actually giving till now were all ASCIIs, right? All normal characters. So we have to also tra transform these to strings for our variable two to take in. Because if you remember, variable two was considered a string. So we have to also uh, overflow all the buffers with a string value so what I can do is we can use Python to generate the whole string for us in a good well-mannered 
way so I can just say Python minus C print is 24 times so we are not uh, worried about what the locations of each of the memory locations are so we do not need to worry about what exactly RBP minus 16 or RBP minus 8 is because we have taken note that whatever the address is we only need 24 characters before we can hit the old instruction pointers saved location right so that is going to be 24 so I'm going to print a 24 times and append to it this memory location that I have just copied and pasted right here so this memory location or this hex address will be converted to string right here and I'm going to uh, write this in a file so let's say bof.txt and let's run bof.txt okay dot txt so I'm getting this value all right so let me copy this and I'm going to run this program again yep next instruction and let's go to the scanf now the important part comes back nice so if I just go on info frame you can see that the saved rip is now pointing to five 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 one seven five which was this address isn't it not you see so we are now pretty much sure that this is what is going to be executed soon enough so if I just go at some points and and I, I will just show you what memory locations the buffer overflow actually happen so if I just go say is X G S R B P plus and okay uh, minus 16 you will see what repeats 24 yes a is repeated 24 times you can see that so minus 8 we also get uh, a is repeated 16 times nice so if I just press RBP you can say that we have a, a, a we have eight A's from here and the last one is RBP plus 8 this is the important part this is particularly the string version of the hex memory address that we are trying to overwrite saved old instruction pointer so now let me go ahead and say disassemble main so we can see at what exact location I am in right now so I am at when it's supposed to print so let me do one thing what I can do is we can see what the next 10 instructions would actually be like so if I just go X maybe say 10 I RIP nice so I can see that after it comes in 1D it's going to somewhere else so I cannot understand right here anything so let's just trust the uh, let's just trust the CPU and see what it does so we are the next instruction next next so it is showing me the value of variable 1 which is in this case where RBP minus 8 because this was supposed to be printed as hello but it is still showing us this one because the location for or the value for RBP minus 8 has been overwritten with these values so next instruction next instruction next inst nice so you can see we were at main until 1 ED you can see that 1 ED is the last instruction of the main function and after that it should have been quitted the program should say that the program exited successfully or the program has run successfully and we have returned zero and this was a value but instead of quitting it immediately moved on to 5175 you can see we are in now bypass so if I do the same instruction that is x 10 I RIP you can see this is the whole code or the whole uh, disassembled code for the bypass function we are again making a stack frame by pushing the current base pointer moving RBP RSP then computing the static address for the printf string we are uh, executing puts so that is also a kind of printf we are displaying something on the screen so if I just continue on executing the next instructions we can see that we do get the string called program execution changed which is literally what exactly happened so what I did was we were trying to use the same buffer overflow or memory overwriting techniques that I used to change the value for variable 1 by overflowing variable 2 we use the same exact technique to overflow the old saved reap 
or the old saved instruction pointer to a manually coerced new instruction pointer which points to a memory location or which points to a function in this case which was manually intended to do so but not written in the program to do or act such way. So what I'm trying to say is the original intent of the program was to never call the function bypass but we kind of exploited the buffer overflow or the memory overwriting vulnerability to actually make that happen. We actually called the bypass function when it was never intended to. So when I'm coming with the second video, I'm going to use the same exact technology to do something bad or actually not bad, we can say it's an educational kind of bad, it's an educational kind of evil, so that doesn't matter. So what we have done here is the same technology that will be used to actually perform buffer overflows or actually perform some tasks which was never intended to do by the original programmer or by the original program itself. So that basically concludes the lesson for today. So if I actually try to do this with the original program itself and let's see if it works. So I have copied that value. So I'm running memf normally. So if I just go on and type this value, see we are not getting the value or we are getting segmentation fault. This particular set of strings didn't allow us to actually go and call the bypass function. The reason being is that we in this modern systems we have something called an address space layout randomization what it does is or we also call that ASLR what it does is it keeps the offset same which is you can see that 5175 this 176 179 these offsets are usually the same but these starting addresses they are actually changed every time the program gets executed so bypassing ASLR is a whole new concept for even me right now so I don't know how to do that yet. When I will, I will be sure to teach you the same. But as of now, I don't know that myself. So the main concept that I wanted to show is you can uh, bypass or you can actually change the control flow of the main program or do anything you want that is not actually intended for the program to do. So that basically concludes the video of today. I really hope that you have learned something from this tutorial and uh, stay tuned, I'm going to upload the next video pretty soon enough. Thank you. Until next time, goodbye.